deleted some important files and can't get them back? Stop what you're doing and don't touch your computer until you've watched the first part of this video. I'll then show you how to recover your lost files. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. We've all been there. You think you've finished with a file, you delete it, you empty your recycle bin, and then you need that file again. Or you delete the wrong folder, or you format a USB stick, or one of hundreds of other situations where your work is lost. But it's not always lost for good. There are a number of ways you can get your files back. So let's go through this process. So first off, a, a very important note. As soon as you notice you've lost your data, stop. When you delete a file, the data stays on the disk, but the place where it's saved gets marked for reuse. If you then save other files to that same disk, you can overwrite the old file data. At this point, you won't be able to get it back, or at least not all of it. So if you're in the middle of researching how to recover your data, and it was on your system hard drive, so in other words, the same drive as your Windows or Mac operating system is on, or if you've only got one hard drive in your computer, then please do shut down your computer right now. As you use your computer, it will automatically be creating temporary files, downloading updates and so on, and all of these can overwrite your lost files, meaning that they will be gone forever. Then boot up your phone or your tablet or another computer and then continue watching this video. So before we go into the data recovery part, don't forget that there may be some built-in safety on your computer. Now again, if your deleted files were on your system hard drive, don't turn your computer back on again. When you click to delete a file on one of your hard drives, it usually goes into some sort of recycle or trash bin. Now the file hasn't yet been deleted and your operating system, so either Windows or Mac OS or Linux, will keep that file safe for a few weeks before deleting it for good. Now your recycle bin usually appears as a folder on your desktop. So just open it up and you will see your recently deleted files. On a Windows computer, just right click a file or folder and select the restore option. This will put the files back to where they came from. Now, unfortunately, if you've been putting your files on USB drives, these don't have a recycle feature. So if you delete a file on one of these, then it's gone for good and you'll have to use the full recovery method. Now, if you've emptied your recycle bin or your trash bin, then again, you'll need the full recovery method because Windows will have deleted them. So if you think it might be in your trash bin or your recycle bin, then please do start up your computer, have a quick look, if it's not there, then shut down again. Now you might also be running some sort of secondary backup using some sort of cloud storage, uh, such as Microsoft's OneDrive. Now these applications keep a copy of your files on remote cloud servers. So if you delete a file from your PC, even if you clear your recycle bin, OneDrive or the other ones like that will keep a backup copy for up to sort of three months or so. So to get these files or folders back, you'll need to log on to the OneDrive website or the website that goes with your um, cloud storage and then go to its own recycle bin. You can do this from any computer or phone or tablet. From there, you can then select and restore the files and folders as you need. Once you've restored them online, you can then boot up your PC and it should then be able to synchronize and pull those files back down to the local computer. So what if you've then tried these simple um, routes, but the file has gone? Well, well, don't worry, there are still some solutions that we can try. Now for this, we're going to need the help of some data recovery software. And the application that I use is the Minitool data recovery app. So this has a free version that will allow you to use it to recover up to one gigabyte of data. So if you've just got a few files, you won't have to pay anything. If you've got more data to recover, then they do have a number of paid options, depending on how much data or how often you think you're going to need to use this software. Now, as I mentioned before, the most important part is not to use the disk drive that your lost data was saved on. As you try to install the app, it will warn you about this. 
so you mustn't install it onto the disk drive that you're trying to recover the data from. If you only have a single hard drive installed as your system disk and the data is on that drive, then you won't be able to use the computer as normal, so you're going to need to create a bootable USB drive with the data recovery app on it. Now this option will actually need you to buy a licensed copy of the software and I'm going to cover that whole process at the end of this video. You can also then just simply take your hard drive out of your computer, connect it up to another computer and then do your data recovery on that computer. Now if you don't have access to a second computer, you can try using a machine to do the recovery. Make sure that you have a USB drive available and plug that into your computer. Then download the app, put it on your USB drive, and then install it, but also install it onto your USB drive. So, so here, we're just simply trying to keep the activity on the main system disk as low as possible. You can then run the app and try the data recovery. So now that we have the software installed, let's take a short look at what we're actually trying to do. So in simple terms, a disk drive works by saving the data in your files into blocks of storage space within the actual drive. So where these blocks are placed is stored in a database on the drive called the file allocation table. So when you delete a file using the normal delete function, all your computer actually does is to remove the entries for your file from the file allocation table database. So this marks the use blocks as free, but most importantly, it leaves the data stored in those blocks where it is. To recover a file, we just need to work out which blocks were used to store its data and then put them back in the correct order to rebuild it. Now this process is why we need a specialist application, as there's no way that we can manually scan the thousands of disk sectors and blocks to reconstruct that data. So now that we know what's going on, let's look at getting our files back. So for these examples, I'm going to be using a fairly small USB drive. Again, that just makes sure that when we scan the drive, it doesn't take too long to work its way through all the sectors. So on that drive then, I have got my three important files sitting in there, and I'm just simply going to now delete those. And of course it's saying that this will permanently delete them, so they're not gonna go into any recycle bin. And if I say yes to that, we now have a USB drive where I have deleted some files. So when you first start up the data recovery app, it will scan your attached drives and then list them out as a number of partitions. Now, now partitions are effectively parts of your various disks that have been set up as individual drives. Now some of them will have letters attached to them, and these will be the drives that you see in your normal file explorer program. Some of them will have no drive letter, and these will actually be normally hidden from view, um, but they are then used by the system for various operations. So at this point you can either scan a complete drive, which will probably take quite a long time, or if you know where the file used to be, you can then browse to a particular folder. Now if you know where that file was, this option is a much faster way of getting um, this recovery taking place. So simply select your starting point, and the software will then click into action. Now this is the part where you'll have to wait for the software to look at all the free sectors and blocks on the drive. So remember that when the file is deleted, it gets removed from the database of files on the drive. So the app is now scanning the surface of the drive to check every free block to see if it used to belong to a file. Once it finds data, it will then try to identify the other parts of that file and rebuild its own version of the file allocation table so that it can then resurrect your deleted information. Now as the scan progresses, you'll see a list of files building up under the deleted, lost and existing sections. So keep an eye on the deleted section to see if your file pops up. If the scan completes and your file isn't found, then there's still an outside chance you can get back at least some of the data from that file but you're going to have to manually go through the lost and broken files to see if anything there can be salvaged. To be honest though, um, this is going to be a very long process with quite a low chance of success. Now hopefully though, you'll find the file listed as I have here. Again, I can't stress enough how important it is not to mess with any other files on the drive until you've run the scan and retrieved the deleted files. 
So all that's left now then is to actually retrieve these files. So in the file list then, I can either click on one and right click on it to recover it. Or if I've got a number to recover, I can, write, I can tick all of the ones I want to recover. And then I can click on save and that will then start to recover those files. Now, of course, it's giving me a warning here saying it's recommended to save the recovered files to another drive. And again, this again comes back to the idea where we mustn't mess with the data on the drive which we're trying to restore from. Um, that can overwrite some of the data that we're trying to recover, even while we're just moving some files around like we are here. So, so do make sure that you recover your files to somewhere else first and then go back and move them to their original locations. So I'm going to put these onto my drive D. I've created a little folder in here where I'm going to recover my files. I'm just going to click OK for that. And there we can see it's now recovering my three files. So if I come into this background window here, I've actually got that open in my recovered files folder. And you can see it's created a little folder inside that area with um, deleted files in it. I'm now going to open that up. And there you can see that we have my three files, my three images have all been recovered. So that's got my files back for me and everything is back in place where it should be. So what if those files were on your system drive? Well, as we saw earlier, using the computer as normal will create files on your system drive that can destroy the lost data. So one option is to take out the hard drive and attach it to another computer. You can then treat it as a secondary hard drive and run the data recovery app on that computer without any worries. Otherwise then, we're going to need to start the computer using a different drive so that it does its automatic file creation on that computer, keeping your system drive data safe. So we're going to create a USB bootable drive for this. Now again, you should run this process on another computer to be as safe as possible. So you're going to need to install the data recovery software onto that computer. Now, as I mentioned, this option of creating a bootable drive is only available in the PED versions of the software. Now, you may also find that when you try to follow my instructions, that the software complains about it not having the downloaded the full code. So just follow the on-screen instructions and send an email to the support team and then they'll send you a link to the full download package. So once you have the full software installed and licensed, then you need to attach a USB drive to the computer and click on this CD icon. This will open up the WinPE media tool. So click on the options button and you'll see a screen asking about drivers. Now, now don't worry too much about this. Um, the easy way here is to just click the detect drivers button and the software will put together a working package for you. If you do fully understand what you're doing, you can adjust these settings, but for the most of us, the defaults will work fine. So click the next button and you'll now need to select the type of boot media that you want to make. So we're working with a USB flash drive, so select that. But if you prefer to make a bootable CD or an ISO file, then you can do that here as well. Now you are going to see a warning message appear telling you that it's about to destroy all the data on your USB drive. So please do make sure that this is OK, as you probably won't be able to recover any data that was on that drive after we finish this process. So you'll end up going around in circles with this data recovery app. So once that's all OK, just click the OK button and your USB bootable drive will be built. Now, once that's finished, we're ready to boot up the computer with the deleted files on it. First, you need to work out how to get into the initial boot menu on your computer. So have a look on the internet for the make and model of your computer and boot menu. So for example, on my test machine, I'm searching for a Dell Optiplex 7010 boot menu. And the results then are showing me that I need to press the F12 key as the computer boots up. So now plug your USB drive into your computer, turn it on and start slowly tapping that boot menu key uh, about twice per second or so. It should then give you a different boot screen and say that it's starting its boot menu. So at that point you can stop pressing the key. You'll now get one of two situations. 
If you can see an option for the USB drive or, or, or some sort of USB bootable media, then that's the one we want. Just simply select it and the system will continue booting. If you can't see that option, you're probably in what's known as secure boot mode, which is designed to stop you accidentally booting from random USB drives. So we need to turn this off. You should see some sort of option to change your boot mode. So select this and then select the one that mentions the legacy boot mode. Now your computer will probably restart again, so press that boot menu button again until you get back to the USB boot drive option. Now this legacy boot mode is not something you need to leave your computer in, so don't forget that once we've finished getting back all of your files, we'll need to come back into this boot menu and come back and reset it to our secure boot mode. But either way then, we, we, you should now see the Minitool app coming up on your screen. So on this first screen, we need to select the option of the data recovery tool, and this will then open up our application as before. Now you've not got as many options available in this version, and you're going to have to scan the full drives to get at your deleted files. But again, once you start the scan, keep your eye on the deleted files section as the scan progresses to see when your files pop up. As soon as they do, you can stop the scan and then go ahead and restore your data. Once you've finished, click the red button at the top right corner to close the app, then remove your USB drive and then reboot your computer. So hopefully, you'll now have all your files back safe and sound. So that's pretty much it then for data recovery for your deleted files. So again, the important things are to keep calm, try to reduce the activity on your disk drive, and then use some good quality data recovery tools to get that data back. So I hope you find this useful. I do hope you get your files back and don't lose any of your data. If you found this video useful, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for lots more PC, gaming, modding, electronics and making projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.